Hi everyone and welcome back to another week of painting. Happy, happy painting. Um, this week I am going to try something like um, a tonal kind of a subject, a tonal kind of um, a scene. Um, I got a request for um, for some from someone to show them how would you approach a kind of a tonal type of a landscape. So everything tonal this week. Now, I don't proclaim to know everything about painting. In fact, I know very little about all this terminology in painting in the art world, tonal values and all this kind of thing. I know very little about it, I'll be honest, okay? I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, but I do know that kind of tonal paintings would consist of a very kind of um, showing different values and colors with just basic a basic few select colors on, uh, on your palette. So maybe just two or three different colors and you create your entire painting from those three colors. So focusing on lights and darks of those hues, of those colors, uh, and creating your painting that way, rather than just having lots of different colors on your palette. So I thought it would be fun to try something like this. I found a beautiful scene um, on Pixie Bay, I think it was, and it's a lovely kind of, a very dark, subdued kind of a landscape. It's um, it's full of atmosphere, but there's only maybe three colours used in the entire painting. So I'm going to try that this week. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And it's, I think tonal paintings, uh, painting with a tonal kind of a style, creates very dramatic paintings um, and very dramatic scenes, and it gives you a very atmospheric kind of a feeling in a painting. Would you agree? Um, from what I've kind of learned over the years. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna try that this week. Uh, one thing I wanted to say was, I wanted to give my sincere condolences to um, Gary, who lost his mother, I think he said it was, he lost his mother from the uh, coronavirus. Um, and also Tony, if you're watching, uh, Tony lost his partner as well. So um, it's very, very sad. And I just wanted to pass on my sincere condolences to you both. And of course, anybody else who has um, lost loved ones because of this virus. It's so, so sad. Um, I hope you'll be okay. I will pray for you and your families and I'm sure everybody around you is doing the very same thing, okay, uh, everyone? So, um, listen, just try and keep positive as, positive as positive as you can. I know it's very, very difficult. Uh, you might feel like the whole world is coming to an end. I can only imagine what it must feel like to lose a loved one. Um, I don't think I'd ever be able to bear it, to be quite honest. So, I just wanted to let you know that we're thinking about you all, um, if you have lost loved ones out there. Um, so look, if anything, at least it might take your mind off of things just for the hour that we're painting uh, and just make it a little bit easier for you, just for that hour, okay? So I'm very, very sorry for your losses, okay? Um, right, let's move on and do a nice bit of painting, okay? I hope you like this. Um, don't go anywhere. I'll see you very, very soon. Okay, here we go. This is the canvas. It's a um, 16 by 12 canvas and I have primed it once and I rubbed it very lightly with some very fine sandpaper. I'll show you what the sandpaper is. Very, very fine sandpaper. Um, it's, what is it, P180 grit. I presume that's the grit 180. Very, very fine. And just to soften it off. Then what I done was, I just took some blue uh, paper, okay, kitchen paper or tissue, something like that. And I just took some linseed oil. This is just regular cheap linseed oil from my art store, okay. I just dabbed it like this and I gave it a quick, a very fast once over, all right. Now that's pretty much drying in, it's almost completely dry. Um, <clears throat> the linseed oil is it's not like a li uh, liquid clear or anything like that. Uh, the liquid clear will stay wet on your canvas and your colours will soften through it. I find that a little bit too wet for me, so I prefer using the linseed oil. And then it kind of soaks in to the canvas, but it makes it lovely, lovely and smooth. And, and when you paint down onto this end with your paint or your little bit of turpentine, it sort of brings out that oil and everything goes nice and smoothly on, on the canvas. That's the only reason. I don't do it every time. It's just sometimes if, I, if I'm if i doing something with a, with a lot of blending, I would use a, just a quick layer of oil. That's all. Now, <clears throat> okay, my colours. 
a very limited palette now very dark subdued colors i have titanium white uh lamp black and i have a little cadmium yellow some perusian blue not thalo uh they're very very similar perusian blue is a little bit more on the greeny side of blue and some burnt umber so four colors i think that should do fine now there's a the picture isn't that wonderful um i just want to get that kind of feeling in the the photograph uh very kind of dark very dramatic kind of a sky and using the same colors throughout the painting all the very same mixes except just different values and different shades of that mix to separate each aspect of the landscape okay so let's just have a bit of fun with this and see how it goes now <clears throat> for this guy i'm going to start off with my large stubby now we have very very light color in the center don't we now for that i'm thinking let me just dampen my brush very slightly it's only just barely damp now i'm going to take a little bit of prussian blue and i'm going to take lots of white now the white will get very very thick again so you may have to add a tiny amount of turpentine just to the corner of your brush okay a tiny amount i have just a tiny amount of turpentine in there look that's all that should be loads and i'm going to go right in there now with that color i think that should do and i'm going to put that color right in the center by the way i put masking tape across there where the end of the mountain meets the water just so that it's nice and sharp a nice sharp edge so I'm putting this now, lovely colour right around in the centre. I may start adding a little bit more of the Prussian blue to it. A little bit more white. Now another tiny amount of turpentine, just to soften it again. And into that now, I'm thinking I may add a hint of um, burnt umber. This should make it a little bit more on the greeny side. Yeah, it does. I just want to go up here with that colour. And I'm going to soften that. It gets kind of slightly darker over on one side. <clears throat> and to bring that up, I'm going to sort of soften it into the painting like this. Look. So it's kind of swooping down into the sky. Coming down from, coming down from above. Isn't that right? And we lose our soft blender brush as well on this in a moment. Now I'm going to dampen my brush again very slightly. Take up a tiny amount of top and time. Pick up some black. So we can do this entire landscape now pretty much with just these colours. And as I said earlier, the focus is on learning how to um, paint different sections of your landscape with the same colour, but just a lighter value. That's all it is basically, a lighter value of the colour. Or a darker value, whichever, whichever you need. So I've taken, you know, for that, I've taken some burnt on burlock, a hint of black and a hint of blue. Now maybe a bit more of the blue than anything else because it's a very rich bluey kind of a dark blue sky, isn't it? <coughs> now, apologies. Right, and let's go along now up here and put that in. And what I'm going to do then is as it comes down, I'm going to sort of soften it down into the sky. So. I want to get the feeling of it kind of swooping down from above. Do you know what I mean? Now I've just taken a little bit more blue. Just to make it a bit more on the bluey side. Okay, you see, that's not bad now, is it? And I'm going to just darken it very slightly here. I want to keep this light light nice light section in the centre. I don't want to ruin that. So I'm going to bring this right across now and the oil is kind of helping the paint just smooth around. It's helping it flow around on the canvas lovely. That little bit of oil that's in the canvas. Now phthalo blue, or not phthalo blue, Prussian blue, little burnt umber. And let's go over here and that's a nice rich bluey kind of a colour isn't it? And come down here like that. It's a very, very dry mix as well, okay? I don't have much paint on my brush. Um, they're very, very thin layers. So you can see me now, and you can hear me, kind of scrubbing this into the canvas. So it's a very thin layer. Now I'm going to come down slightly lower with this. There we go. And I'm going to start to just soften it around down here and there. 
Now, as I said, I will use my blender brush as well. But once I have a nice bright center, I'm I'm happy. So with the same brush now, it's a dry brush, okay? It, this is pretty much dry now, this brush. There's no turpentine in this. Um, I want to get a really rich, dark color for on top there. So let's take some Prussian Blue, a good bit of that. Let's take some Lamp Black, a good bit of that. Now be very careful, I don't want too much black in this. And let's try just that color, and let's go up here and have a look, and see how that looks. That's nice, isn't it? Very rich, dark, kind of dramatic sort of a sky color. Very dark, stormy cloud. And I come over here with that. Let's go right, I'm just kind of flicking the brush around in sort of circles here and there. And then, I'm going to take a very dark color, I'm going to go with black, into that color now. Some blue again, and some burnt umber. And that's going to get really kind of a dark. So keeping with the same tones, just darker versions of those colours, that's all. And let's go up there, let's take a bit more of the blue, a little bit more of the black. Go up there and get really dark on the top. And go right down. And it's just a lot of fun. This is just now a lot of fun doing this. Now, I think I might leave that, and what I might do is, with my soft brush, okay, I might just very gently kind of flick it downwards as, as though it's coming down from above. Okay. Now, I'll go up here, and I'm going to soften some of this. I'm very lightly just dragging that now, just with the tip of my brush. Now this is just a regular ladies foundation brush, or a powder brush, it's just a, a regular one, my wife is not using it anymore. So I said yes, I will have it, I will use it for my painting, don't throw it in the bin. Every brush will come in handy at some stage for something, isn't that right? Now, let's soften this down, coming down into the centre of the painting. So there, now how does that look? It's not bad, is it? I might just lighten a little bit, I'm just going to rub, rub this down on some tissue, okay? Just to kind of keep it as clean as I go, as I can. There we are. And I might just add some brighter colours into that. I'm going to use my small little flat brush here. I have a little flat brush. It's like, um, well, let me do what I do now. I'll use my medium stubby, okay? It's very badly kind of used, so it's all splayed out kind of splayed outwards, you see? Very bad. But it's fine for this. Take a tiny, tiny hint of blue, okay? Just the tiniest amount. And lots of white. I don't want to go pure white because there's not pure white in there. And I'm just going to sort of soften that around. In the centre of the painting. Let's take a tiny amount the tiny white just there, just in the centre. And we can go up here even just a little bit, look, out of the painting. Now, I'll soften that now just again very, very lightly with my brush, look. Very soft, very soft brush strokes. Now I'm happy enough with that for my sky. Okay, let's just keep it nice and simple. Let's not get bogged down with too much details, yes? Now I'm going to next go with my little flatter brush. I have a small little flat brush here. It's a, what is it, a size 10 flat soft brush. And I'm going to put in some nice hills in the distance. Now the hill colour is just basically the same as the sky. So look, I'm going to take my brush. Let's take a tiny amount of top and time, just a tiny amount in my brush. And I'm going to mix a little Burnt umber, a little Prussian blue, I'll take a little white, I'm going to start off with a very light colour now off in the background, and the way to kind of add a hint of a green in there is to take burnt umber with that Prussian blue. So brown and blue, any brown and blue that you put together will make a very muted kind of a grey green. Alright, so let's try this now and see. Um, okay, I'll start here, 
I'll go a bit lighter, so I'll take a bit more white. Okay, so we'll start off now with white. You can see the different shades as you add more white to it, yes? I want to start off with a very light shade and then work my way up. So I'm going to just go like this and let it kind of disappear off into the distance. See, this is just a very loose kind of a, a hill off in the distance. That's all it is. Okay, that's that one. That's fine. Now, you could, if you want, just soften that off into the sky, look. Just let, let's create a little bit of mist. Next, we're going to go with a slightly darker colour. So, I'm going with burnt umber. And I'm using tiny amounts of paint in this now, alright? Don't worry, don't be going to loads of don't be using loads and loads of different lots of paint um just a little tiny amount will do you fine and i'm going to take a little some perusian blue burnt umber perusian blue and that's kind of a greeny sort of a color let's try that we so we have one comes up here uh comes down like that Yes, would you agree? Something like that. Now, would you like me to zoom in, or are you kind of happy enough to see it from that distance? I, I think that's okay. I want you to see my mixing. Um, now, as it comes up higher, it does get a hint darker. So, I'm going to take a hint more of the blue, and I'll take a hint of the black. A tiny amount. Again, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So we're just using the same colours now, but we're changing the values of those colours. That's all it is. Okay. They're the very, very same colours. So it's about... I suppose it's a great tutorial for learning how to work your colours together. And this is kind of, in a way, I suppose... Correct me if I'm wrong now, but in the way, this is like a perfect composition because you're using the same colours throughout your painting. And that's the best way to kind of tie everything together on a painting. Just use the same shades of colour throughout your painting. Now, I'm going nice and dark up on top, okay? And I'm going to soften it down then as it comes down. Soften it out. There we go. Now we have a nice dark one here, don't we, in the front? And in fact, what you could do actually, what I'm going to do is to create some lovely misty effect. You see the misty effect on that hill? I'm going to do that now. So with a dry brush, nice dry brush, I'm just going to simply take a hint of white. Perhaps a hint of blue, actually, as well. Let's just go over a hint of blue. So, a very whitey blue. And let's just... create that, push it in there in a the circular motion, and I'm going to let it soften in to that darker colour. Look, see? There. A lovely, misty kind of a shade off in the distance. So, we're going to go darker again now. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one at the front here now is very rich. Um, there's a bit of green in this. So I'm going to start off now first with a nice kind of a base colour. So I'm going to go with Prussian Blue again. Some burnt umber. Now that's already giving me a lovely, lovely grey. Green, see it? A very dark green. Remember I said any blue and any brown will make a lovely green for you. So I'm just going to go up here now and I'm going to cut right down in front of that. And go right over here like that. And I just use the photograph just as a reference. You don't have to make it exactly the same. Alright. Yeah, that's a bit better now, isn't it? And I suppose the thing with working with oils is, of course, it's wet into wet, isn't it? So, your colours are going to sort of mix very slightly together as you go along. But I, can, I quite like that. You can do this now on acrylics as well. But I quite like when the colours kind of mix in together. I'm going to go higher with this. Um, so I'm going to take now this time some black. 
some brown and look I'm mixing all of this now in the one area okay and then I'm going to take a hint of cadmium yellow just a little hint of it to make a very very rich dark dark green and I'm going to go up here now down like that okay there we go so it's a hint of green there now and I'm going to just kind of put some contrasting colours through that mountain, through that hill. So there could, because there are some very dark kind of crevices here and there in the hill, aren't there? So I'm going to take some Prussian blue with some black. And I'm going to sort of just with my brush, just create some kind of dark ridges and lines. Just here and there, you see? Just very loosely. I suppose the emphasis is really on... The painting as a whole rather than you know going through and getting lots of different details and whatnot it's just about the exercise of a tonal painting creating a kind of a tonal landscape you see so i'm just using the same colors throughout my painting now there we go now into that i think i might just put a nice striking black very dark black right along the bottom here a blacky kind of a green so i'm going to take some lamp black and some cadmium yellow and i might just kind of put that through just along the bottom here yes because it's a very striking color there's a bit of kind of greeny color going through this landscape as well and this color will complement the color at the bottom as well this lovely dark green so look i'm just going to sort of soften it up here and there into the hill add an extra hint of yellow just here and there and that, that will create a nice light source on the hill let's kind of drag it down now like that and soften it down and then just clean my brush quickly on some tissue I'll take a hint of white and put a hint of white with the yellow and just to create a little light spot just here and there going through the hill you see coming down here and there now that will do fine i think that's okay for now now you can of course go with your pointy brush and put a bit of detail in there if you wanted to um, i think i will just on this one here even just with some black and a hint of Prussian blue just a very very dark 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 color uh, let's just kind of pick out little areas where you would like to kind of separate the front hill here from the back hill okay <coughs> and let's go again so some nice dark it's, there's some nice dark shades up around here I'll pull some lines down just to create some dark kind of crevices here and there and again I am going to kind of come along here and create one or two so there we go now isn't that lovely And that will do fine so the next step now is I'm going to take off the masking tape let me just get that off there out of the way now isn't that lovely so far so now moving down onto the water and I'm just going to with my pencil I'm just going to quickly mark out where the grasses kind of go up into the water so we don't have to paint all the way down then you see we don't really have to and uh, let's again go with I think I'll go with my medium stubby this time yes I'm going to start off now with a very light color similar to the sky so pretty much the same as the sky let's take some white let's take a little Prussian blue and I will take a little burnt umber so that will give me that very light 
bluey, almost a kind of a whitey, greeny blue kind of a tone, which is throughout the painting. Now we just get all the paint off of the edge of the brush there, okay? A little bit more white. Let me just try that now for a moment. Okay, I think it needs to be a bit more on the white side, doesn't it? So just a tiny hint of serpentine, a little bit more white. Now, let's try this. So I'm going to push down hard now on the brush and go right up in here and get a nice sharp line. Look. Very gently pull it across. There we go. Now, I don't know, my eyes deceiving me, or does that horizon, does that line look slightly off? My, my eyes are definitely deceiving me. Maybe it is slightly off, who knows? I go up slightly higher here. Okay, I think that'll do fine. So let's now come down with this, with that colour. I'll take a little bit more blue as it comes down. I'm just going to drag it across here all the way. Left to right, left to right. Alright. There we go. I might take a hint more green kind of a colour. So I'll take some of the green from this up here. It's like a grey, muddy grey kind of a green colour. Oh, I'll take a little hint of that. I'll soften it through. And then when I get to this, I'm going to go really dark, dark, dark colours, yes? So let's go with some black. A uh, hint of Prussian blue. And that Prussian blue is very, very rich and strong. It's very, almost the very same as Thalo blue. Um, in that it can be really overpowering very, very quickly. So just use it very cautiously, that's all I'll say. Now, we have those colours. Let's go up here first and put in this across here like so and let's let it fade off like that okay rub your brush on the tissue just to take off that bit of white go back into that nice dark color and let's just come down all the way and now just going to soften that dark color i will make this darker now don't worry very gently soften it across, left to right, left to right. I won't mix it too much. I put a little bit of it just here and there, because there's some in between some of the grasses, isn't there? As you can see, just little bits. Um, I put a little bit on this side. Yeah, like that. Okay, now, next I'm going to go very dark, I'm going to make a very, very dark mix of that. I'll take black, and I'm going to put a hint of cadmium yellow into this, and then a lot of Prussian blue. So we have a very dark, rich, bluey green, very, very, very dark colour. Just to complement the colour up overhead, okay? So you can see now, working in dark colours, it does create for a very dramatic kind of a landscape, doesn't it? Now I'm just going to soften it in first, like that. Then I'm going to go really dark. I'm going to get some black and some Prussian blue, just those two colours, and go very dark with that. A bit more blue. And I'm going to gently just bring it out there, very gently, look. Just a little bit here and there. Okay. I'm going to stop now, just for a moment, at that. And what I might do is... <coughs> I might just, with my palette knife... Let me find my palette knife. It should be here somewhere. There it is. I'm going to just take some pure white now on this, okay? on my sharp edge. Little bit of white. Make a little rip, ripple, say a little ridge, just on the edge of, edge of the palette knife, little ridge. And I'm gonna go cross under this. 
just bring it across like that just a little now I'll clean that pick up another little bit and that will just give me a nice bright spot just in there and then go in here and create some little small ripples just where they meet do you know what I mean a couple of small little ripples just don't go crazy now with this just a few just a couple a handful just to give it the ripple effect that's all there we are now I'll go in another tiny bit with this so can't you see now the beautiful painting that we've created just with a handful of colours just a tiny handful of colours now I am going to soften just at the line there where they meet okay very gently pull it across I just want to soften that out a little to create a little bit more distance in the painting look just like that there that's fine now I'll move on to the grass and then we can kind of do this lovely tree coming up through the painting yes okay um, yeah that's not bad we can walk away on this as we go I think I will try let me see now what brush will I try hmm I'm looking for a nice brush that I can use now for these grasses. Let me try. I won't try that one. Hmm, maybe I'll try the large stubby. So what I'm going to do is just give this. I'm going to dip this into my turpentine, and I'm going to give it a good dry on my tissue. Look, a good kind of a clean. Get all that dirty colour out of the brush. Now, there we are. Right, grasses. Let's go with a nice. I'm thinking a nice medium kind of a green first. So I'll go with some black and then lots of cadmium yellow. So I'm going to go with this kind of a nice medium green first and then add darks afterwards, yes? So it's still a very kind of a rich dark green, you see? So I'm going to just start pulling that grass in here and there. And start going around the blue areas just leave those now let me just take a hint of turpentine because it's quite dry now if you've got too much turpentine just dab it on your, your tissue once or twice again a little bit more yellow you get a nice rich kind of a green going on here and there Coming on nicely. Uh, let's go in here and add a bit there. Let's just fill all this corner up like that. Um, okay, now I need to get more yellow. Here we are. So, you know, there's lots of kind of valuable lessons out in a painting like this. There's lots of valuable little hints and tips that you can, I think, that you'll be able to kind of learn from. Um, especially using one kind of color but creating lots of different shades from that one color just by lightening it or darkening it you know what I mean I think you will learn a lot about um, your composition in your painting by doing it this way now I'm going to make a very rich dark color some black some yellow uh, burnt umber and a bit of blue okay very very dark very rich dark green and I'm going to go in now here and there and just start putting in some of the shady darky kind of colors I'm just flicking it up here and there look that's all and put a couple here And let's get a bit more black, yellow, little burnt umber, and some blue again. It gets very dark down around this area here, it gets really dark. 
Now I might even go up a little bit more um, on this side here. Okay, again, very dark colours. And then really dark down in this corner here, look. I'll just use black and blue on its own. Okay, now I'm going to leave that. I'm putting this brush down now and I'm going to try and get some nice lighter, little lighter flicks of grass here and there, okay? I'm going to use this medium brush. I'm just going to give it a very quick clean for one moment, okay? So I'll just give it a nice quick clean. Uh, we're doing good for time. I said 55 minutes, that's not bad. I'll tell you something. These light, these nice loose paintings are fantastic fun. Um, they're not kind of contrived to too much detail too early on. It's great, great fun. Now, let's take some white and add a bit of white into that mix. I'll take a bit of yellow. So we're going to just add a couple of little highlights now, just here and there. I'll take a little hint of blue. So it's a bluey kind of a bright bluey kind of a green. It's not a yellowy sort of a green at all, you see? And let's just go along here and there. Add a couple of a couple of highlights on some of the grasses. Okay, let's put a couple of them there. That's grand now for now, okay? It's just nice and simple. Um, I'm going to take a fan brush and I'm going to kind of pull some of those down. Okay, for a moment. I'm going to go in then. I'm going to take now uh, a nice small flat brush, okay? And I'm going to go in and start putting some of the water colour, the colour of the water in there, okay? I'm going to dampen this brush very slightly. Take a little white. Take a little Prussian blue. I'll take a little burnt umber. Okay. And I'm going to just lighten it slightly. And I'm going to go in here then and start putting in some of this colour of the water, okay? Just around the place there, here and there. I'm just wiggling it left and right. You see? And I'll add a little kind of touches of it here and there in between the, the reeds and the grasses. Uh, come down here, there's a couple of nice bits around here. It's really coming on nicely now, it's a lot of fun this kind of... I'm surprised, I didn't think it would turn out as nice to be quite honest. Um, I was kind of apprehensive because I never know how my paintings are going to turn out. I, I never do. Sometimes they're not so good, sometimes they are. Um, it just depends, I think, on the day that's in it. Sometimes the brush just doesn't want to work for you, I find. And that's when I just put my brushes down and I go and have a cup of tea. Um, a nice cup of tea or coffee. And I just think about what I'm doing. And then I go back to it again. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. A little bit of break, you know, is no harm at all, sometimes. If it's just getting too much for you. Well, let's put a little bit there yeah, like that. Okay, and perhaps just a little hint of it popping through here and there. Okay, now, that's fine. So next time what I'm going to do is take my small pointy brush and I'm going to take some of the very dark colour, very dark green, some black and some yellow, plenty of turpentine in this, 
Okay, lots of turpentine, very watery. I'm just going to go, ahead and go in and add some little dark shapes of glasses just here and there, okay? Especially where the water meets the grasses just there. I'm going to put a lot of dark color just in around there. Alright, I'll take another little bit. Let's go up here and put a couple. Um, ideally, now this would be best if you let the painting dry. I meant add it afterwards. But you know, I never really had the best patience in the world. My wife will tell you that. So, um, I'd like to just try and get some of it in, at least. But let's get a couple of little ones here and there, up here. And then we'll tackle this lovely tree, will we? So it's just a little suggestion of some of them here and there, that's all. And we'll do the very same then with some lighter ones later on, okay? In fact, we could try a couple with some nice rich cadmium yellow on the brush. Okay, now, I think we'll concentrate on our tree, uh, this wonderful, wonderful tree coming right up. Uh, now, this is still wet, so let's just go with it and see what we can do, okay? Um, I'm going to just go with, I think, just a black, a nice rich black, maybe a hint of blue. Lots of turpentine, lots of black, lots of blue, and let's just see if we can get this nice tree up and running right I'm going to start let's just go here somewhere okay and I'm going to have to keep, keep cleaning my brush as well now because it's picking up the white as it goes okay now it goes over a little bit like that you know you can kind of make it your own as well it doesn't have to be exact an exact copy A little bit of burnt umber, just to sort of darken it down a bit, uh, make it just a little bit kind of on the warmer side. Okay, um, I'll go down here and make this nice and wide at the bottom. And then as it goes up, then it goes straight up like that first. And it kind of breaks off here, doesn't it? Like so. And then it breaks off again. Like so. Now, I'll zoom in, I think, for this, so you can see nice and close what I'm doing, okay? There, is that okay? I'm going to get my stick, my trusty stick, my little bamboo stick. Well, it's not bamboo, it's just like a normal, regular timber stick. And I'm going to go up here now and start working on... I think I'll get that corner done first up there. So, lots of tin lines... Lots of turpentine in your brush. And just go and have a bit of fun. Come on, let's just go off it. Don't worry too much.
Right, I'll leave it at that because we had foliage on this. We have a lot of foliage on this side, so I'm going to use my brush for foliage on that. Um, okay, we go off to this side. And we give this just branches, I think. You can really hear the rain outside now. It's coming down very heavy now. Um, I give this one a couple of small kind of squiggly branches, just like that. Look, nice and small. And then we go to this one here. Okay, like that. Now I will take a little black. A little black here and there. Well, I'm going to make the, st the tree trunk just that little bit thicker because I feel it needs to be able to kind of hold all of this branch up in the air. It seems a little bit on the thin side for me to be able to do all of that. But look. Bring it down there like that. Um, I go up here now and add a bit of foliage to this, I think. So I'm going to use my medium stubby brush again. I give it a quick clean. And we go into some nice dark, dark, dark colours now. Let's get some. Cadmium yellow, some black. And some Prussian blue. Really, really dark, blacky, greeny colour. I'm just going to go up here and create this is kind of the outline of some of that foliage, okay? Put up a bit more blue. Perhaps a hint of yellow just here and there. Um, okay, I won't go too much now, don't overdo this, okay? And then we'll go up the tree trunk. I'm going to get some nice dark green and I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. To give it that impression of lots of bits and pieces growing off it. Lots of little bits of ivy or bits of foliage. You, you know, call it what you want. But it's lots of bits and bobs. People like when I say bits and bobs, isn't that right? We call it bits and bobs. I call it bits and bobs for you today. Uh, let's get really dark down in the centre down here. And it sort of disappears off then kind of goes into the grass underneath, doesn't it? So let's just kind of give it some nice dark. Oh, rather than that. And then I'm going to pick out some little bits of light here and there. A uh, little one or two little lights, just catching me just here and there. It's a pointy brush. Okay. Couple around here and there. Um, no, I want to go a bit darker still. And just pull some reflections down. There will be reflections cast in some of them. Now there's a lot of reflection cast in a lot of them, but I'm just going to kind of keep this simple. Nice dark areas. Okay, and I think, I think that's pretty good. I would be kind of happy enough now with that. You could maybe 
just give one or two little tiny hints of foliage or little leaves here and there to a pointy brush a couple of little dabs that's all just to suggest one or two okay no big deal all right let's take a look at what we have now I am going to again I'm going to lighten some of the reflection color there it's still a little bit on the muddy side for me so a bit of blue and a bit of white and let's just go again and give that a little dab of color here and there a little bit around here and there like that okay not in too kind of uh, not in too fussy all right I think that is a wrap a nice simple scene a nice simple kind of a setting lots of contrasting colors um, I think that's what really kind of catches your eye with paintings like this lots of lights and lots of darks and it look it's a very simple composition a very simple kind of um, a landscape to try and paint but just try it yourself see what you think let me know how you get on and send me emails of your work okay i'd love to see how you're doing how you're getting on with all of your paintings because it's great fun seeing how you're learning from this I get great fun of it, and it's very, very interesting to see your take on these um, landscapes as well. To see what way you kind of walk around. You know what I mean? So yeah, do send them to me. Don't be shy. StephenConway12 at gmail.com Alright, there we go. Now, I'll leave it at that. I will kind of add in little bits of lights and little bits of little grasses here and there just as a bit of contrast you see but I think in general you know that's just the kind of atmosphere that I was trying to get at um, with the painting now you could like we say for example take a touch of light blue and you could put a hint of light blue just here and there on the tree as well just to give it a couple of lights um, and let me zoom in now and show you what this kind of looks like close up. Okay, let me just fix the camera here. So you can see now how we've kind of just used all the same colours, four colours, not including white. Create this look, you can see. Isn't it wonderful? Nice and simple, but I think very effective. So let me know what you think about that. That was a lot of fun, something different to try in a normal kind of sunset or something like that. Um, you know, yeah. let me know how you get on with that. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, again, for deepest, deepest sympathies to uh, Tony and Gary, we are very, very sorry for your losses. Um, I'll be back again next week with something, um, you know, I'll see how the mood takes me next week. Uh, I might paint something completely, completely off the wall, maybe, maybe a board of eagle or something like that, something completely different. So let me know what you think, subscribe, um, and happy painting. I'll see you again very soon, thank you so much for your support, and uh, God bless you all, take care.